Holy cow. Alan Dershowitz, the Harvard law professor, is an unabashed liberal who voted for Hillary Clinton, but his tendency to defend President Trump during the Mueller investigation dramatically changed the way the media treated him. And joining us now from New York to talk about Mueller and the media is Alan Dershowitz, who wrote the introduction for the Mueller report, the final report of the special counsel into Donald Trump, Russia and collusion, which hit number one on Amazon over the weekend. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. So. Throughout this investigation, when you frequently did defend the president, your integrity was intact. Uh, critics wrote you off as a kind of a Trump shill. You even said that you were shunned by some of your former friends last summer, Martha's Vineyard. How do you feel now? Well, I think I've always tried to be objective. I'm neutral. I'm nonpartisan when it comes to analyzing the law. And every single one of the predictions I've made over the past two years has come true. I predicted, for example, this report would this happens constantly where conservative predictions constantly come true. And like Glenn Beck will say something and he'll get just destroyed by the mainstream media as being like a complete nut job kook or something with a prediction. And then he'll end up to be true. Dershowitz and all the conservatives that have been saying no collusion for this entire time have just been proven true and yet it never and then yet you you look at like some of the media and they go they go around as if any of these people um have any uh any of these people on the left should still be listened to honestly all of these people like i don't understand how how maxine waters and jerry nadler and the msnbc po folks how are they not just like crying in embarrassment and in shame for being so wrong on the Trump Russia collusion? How do they have any legitimacy to even discuss things? I on, honestly, if you these, these are people that believe that Trump colluded with Russia, if you were that wrong on that, if you were so dead wrong, why should we listen to you now? If you if you've been so dead wrong in the past on the the, the most important news issue. And and be and, and been this completely dead wrong and have been so sure of yourself. Why should anybody listen to you now? Honestly, and every every liberal should. That's that's how every discussion with these nut jobs should start. Like, well, you believed in Trump Russia collusion, didn't you? Okay, so you really your opinion kind of your your opinion sucks. Your opinion's really not worth much, is it? Me, on the other hand. I never believed Trump Russia collusion because I'm a reasonable, rational person. I can look at the evidence and I can figure out what the truth is. That's why you should listen to me now because I haven't been completely wrong on the biggest story of the last two years. Hello? Would be very critical of the president, but would not find evidence of either collusion, illegal collusion, or obstruction of justice. I made probably a dozen predictions over the years. Every one of them has been true because I'm not any smarter than anybody else, but I don't let my politics influence my legal analysis. I don't allow wishful thinking to substitute for careful legal analysis. And what happened as the result of that is that, for example, CNN, which used to have me on all the time, on Anderson Cooper, on Como, on Lemon, as an analyst, as a centrist analyst, decided, no, no, it's okay to have extreme Trump supporters because people just use them as kind of stick figure exhibits. And then everybody else will do the, the, the narrative of CNN. What they didn't want was a centrist liberal who went against their narrative. So, But let me suddenly, jump in here. Do you know, you've said that the CNN president, Jeff Zucker, uh, yeah. essentially ordered you banned after you took these positions. But do you know that for a fact or is that a I, supposition? No, I do know that for a fact. I've been told that by several people within CNN. He told me the opposite when I met him in the elevator one day. And I asked him, how come I'm not on anymore? And he said, oh, no, 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 you'll be on. But since the summer, I have. Wow. So because Dershowitz made the prediction that there was no collusion, CNN banned him. And it turned out he was right. Why would anybody watch CNN now if they're that bad? The stuff is like mind blowing. It honestly, it just it just blows my mind that we, st we like that they're people that still take CNN seriously. There's people that still take MSNBC seriously. How could anybody take these people seriously when not only were they completely wrong, but they banned somebody who was actually right? 
It's like, so not only is it, not only are they wrong, but they actually go a step further and they affirmatively ban anybody that's actually right. How, I mean, how does anybody not, I mean, how are these people still going on as if, as if nothing's changed and, and they still have legitimacy to be taken seriously? Clinton News Network, Cuck News Network, right? I've never been on a single time. I've been on, you know, all the other networks repeatedly, but clearly uh, they made a decision. They did not want my kind of analysis. You know, they had a choice. They had a choice of a Harvard Law professor for 50 years who's been getting it right, who's a centrist liberal and who has credibility, or Michael Avenatti. And they picked Michael Avenatti. In fact, one night I remember getting a call from CNN saying, oh, we have to cancel you. We have Avenatti. He's coming on tonight. Yeah. And he became their go-to guy. Wow. This is mind-boggling. That the, And it's so true, too. How? Why would anybody trust the a liberals judge of character when they honestly thought Mike Lavinati was great and that he might be the next president and he's amazing. And how, these people are so wrong on every issue. Why does anybody trust a word any of these people say anymore? And every one of his predictions turned out to be false. Not, to mention, not to mention that he's in a bit of legal trouble well, himself. Put let, that aside. Put let, that aside. Okay. Because he's presumed innocent. But he promised Absolutely. us that 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 uh, uh, Trump would be out of office soon, and that his lawsuit would be the downfall of Trump, and all of that. He was proved wrong on every occasion. I really think the networks have to be held accountable for their predictions. I would love to see on your show or other shows just systematically showing what the pundits on the networks predicted and how they came true or not true so we can evaluate the credibility we, of their he's making the same point that i'm talking about yeah these people have no credibility left because they've been wrong so many times and then meanwhile you got somebody like dershowitz who has been proven right and right and right and right and right again um and and yet liberals still won't consider him credible though he's a he's a just a trump supporter we have done some of that, and let me ask you, now that the report is out and you see many journalists saying, well, you know, Mueller may have made no recommendation, but we see lots of evidence of obstruction of justice, what do you make away of the way that news organizations are covering the report now, and do you think they are influenced by uh, any political leanings? Oh, there's no doubt about that. The report itself is a Rorschach test. You could find in it uh, anything you want because there is material very, very critical of the president. In my introduction, I show how Mueller got the law completely wrong on obstruction of justice, and I lay out what the law on obstruction is. You cannot be charged with obstruction if you're the president and you simply exercise your constitutional authority to fire um, Comey or anyone else. I lay that out carefully. And the best precedent for that is George H.W. Bush, who pardoned Casper Weinberger and five other people on the eve of the trial. The special prosecutor said he obstructed justice, but he couldn't be charged with it. And they never mentioned the Bush case in the Mueller. That's hilarious. Yeah, liberals, if Trump pardoned somebody, I could totally see liberals saying that Trump obstructed justice by, by pardoning, by doing a pardon. Report, Mueller was in the Bush administration. Barr was in the Bush administration. And they deliberately omit the Bush case as the leading precedent, which would preclude a president from being charged with obstruction so, for simply exercising his constitutional authority. So, Alan, as a professor, what grade would you give the Mueller investigation? And what about your criticism that Bob Mueller, being named the special counsel, should have made the decision, should have made the call on whether or not to indict for obstruction of justice rather than essentially punting it to Attorney General Barr? Well, I, in my introduction, I give grades. First, I give Mueller an incomplete because he should have made the decision whether or not to charge with obstruction of justice. I think if he had made the decision, it would have to be that he couldn't charge for obstruction of justice because he kind of lays out the arguments why it couldn't be possible. For example, if you have a general statute like obstruction, you can't apply it to the president under governing law unless Congress intended it to apply to the president if this could impact on his ability to govern. So he gets an incomplete on why he didn't make the decision. Mm -hmm. Then he gets a C-plus on the legal analysis of obstruction, and I gave nice. him a B-plus on the factual analysis. The right, right, Minmus, for sure, definitely. 
Yeah, essentially, Mueller ultimately did make the decision not to charge, which is a decision. That's a good point. Factual analysis seems... But Mueller, Mueller tried to say that he was not making a decision, which is obviously BS. Fairly careful, but it should never... Yo, barf bags in the house. What up, barf bag? Welcome to the lecture fan stream. Have been released to the public. Uh, How do you distinguish but that him wasn't releasing his call. to the public that negative his information and Comey uh, being criticized for saying that Hillary Clinton right. was extremely careless? I've That's a double standard. I've Jose, IRL lecture fan is better than gamer lecture fan. Oh, I know, Jose. This has been a good stream, hasn't it? We've got 30 seconds. As long as you're a professor handing out grades, how do you grade the media coverage? Oh, I think a flunk. I mean, even with even with the grade inflation, I just think the media comes off awful, terrible for the yeah, most part. For sure. Uh, I think we're seeing. There's no doubt. There's no question that the media gets an F for the Mueller coverage. There's no dispute about that. A, an elimination of the distinction between the editorial page and the news pages in some of the leading media in the country. And that's right. a shame. Walter Cronkite could not get a job in the media today. Well, there's my headline. Dershowitz says F, and uh, great to have you on. We we'll hope you come back, Alan. Wow. Yeah, I like Alan Dershowitz.